Now, the Canadian Governor of the Bank of England has gone to Edinburgh today to tell the people of Scotland what independence would mean for their money. It sounds like the beginnings of a political joke, but it was very serious technical stuff. Mark Carney spoke with the mild-mannered nuance of a central banker, but he warned that a newly independent Scotland, which wanted to retain the pound as its currency in a currency union, would also have to accept limitations on its newfound freedoms. So what's the point? Well, our economics editor Faisal Islam was in Edinburgh for the speech, and he joins us now. Faisal. Matt, this was not the governor of the Bank of England telling the people of Scotland that independence was bad economically. No, it was a little more subtle, a more technocratic, diplomatic warning about the precise method of independence chosen by the Scottish government, which is independence within a sterling zone. And recent history, the crises in the Eurozone raising issues about sovereignty, the crisis in the British banking system centred after all in Edinburgh headquartered banks raising issues about who would bail out and regulate those banks. Those were the issues raised. And after all, the active union followed a Scottish banking collapse around the same time as the creation of the Bank of England. And today, the governor's words were keenly watched. What's in the box from the Bank of England's vaults? Not the economic case for Scottish independence, but a rare sighting of the closely guarded giant and titan. These are legal sterling banknotes you won't find at a cash machine designed to account for the current extent of Scottish independence, its freedom to allow its banks to print their own banknotes. In return, those banks must buy hundreds of these and they aren't cheap. Now, for £1 million banknotes, not enough. How about this? £100 million, an actual sterling banknote. These ones tend to be owned by the Scottish banks, like RBS, HBOS, Clydesdale, in order to back at the Bank of England the value of the banknotes that are commonly issued in Scotland. It is a physical manifestation of the current connection between the Scottish banknote system and England and Wales, but it's also a symbol of the debate about how economics may well come to determine the arguments around independence. But also, have you got any change? Good morning, morning Mr. Carney. Morning, how are you? Morning, Mr. Carney. The Governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney, arrived in Edinburgh to meet First Minister Alex Salmond this morning as he laid out some of the economic challenges that independence would entail. In particular, the notion that an independent Scotland would keep the pound and the Bank of England's crisis guarantees to Scottish banks. These arrangements help ensure that Scotland can maintain a banking system whose collective balance sheet is substantially larger than its GDP. The euro area has shown the dangers of not having such arrangements, as well as the difficulties of the necessary pooling of sovereignty in order to build them. An independent Scotland would need to consider carefully how to develop arrangements with the rest, with the continuing United Kingdom, arrangements that are both consistent with its sovereignty and sufficient to maintain financial stability. The size of a country's banking system compared to its national income is an important measure of financial stability. The governor's speech tables pointed out that Scotland's banking system is more than 12 times the size of its national income and compared that to the pre-crisis banking systems of Ireland, of Iceland and of Cyprus. All far smaller and all went bust, dragging the countries with them. Massive Scottish headquartered banks going bust is not exactly a theoretical problem. Both here at RBS's Edinburgh HQ and at HBOS, tens of billions of pounds of secret support was required in 2008 from the Bank of England. The offices of Fred the Shred, where a series of disastrous decisions were made, used to be behind me. They've now been replaced by new open plan offices. But the role of RBS still looms large in the independence debate. And that's part of what Mark Carney was pointing to today. The Scottish Government wants a Scottish regulator for banks such as RBS, but still wants access to the Bank of England. Mr Carney cast some doubt on that today. This week I asked the RBS chief executive if it was too big for Scotland. What I'm going to do is leave that to the people of Scotland to actually have their referendum and we'll need to adjust our business accordingly if that is the case. But you would have to adjust it? Could, is RBS simply too big 
to be domiciled in independent Scotland. As I said, let's leave the people of Scotland to make their determination about what they want. And as I say, if I need to operate in 39 countries rather than 38, that's what we need to do. The people of Scotland, well, the polls have slightly narrowed with an upturn in support for the Yes campaign. So you're a yes whether or not, whatever the currency? I'm, I'm kind of a yes. I'm certainly for more devolution. Uh, I have lots of English friends who want to stay here too in an independent or further devolved Scotland. Would you still want to keep the pound? No. You don't want to keep the pound? What do you want? Euro. The euro. Yeah, I do think it should keep the pound, yeah. Isn't that a bit having your cake and eating it? Yeah, yeah, I guess it is. But I love cake, so... <laughs> Mark Carney's main message, a warning that an independent Scotland in Stirling would immediately cede back important sovereignty to London. That's it. It's over. It's over. It's over. The union, the push for independence, or perhaps the governor's foray into some rather sticky politics.